Welcome to ABL Hot Corner, brought to you by Viva. to go, things are hotting up. I'm Brooke Boris Kilpatrick, with me is Jamie Janga Cloden. And Clodes, what did you see for your stories of the round? Well, the aces, how can you go past the aces? Aces rolling. Mm -hmm. We're in, I haven't got an aces top, so I'll go with the monarch. Going old school, that's alright. I won't jump on the bandwagon, but geez, they're looking good, they're, they're taking the world by storm. Yeah, they look tough to toss, they're going to finish first, mm -hmm. there's no doubt about it. And um, after that, it's going to be a bit of a battle for those last two spots in the playoffs. Yeah, I think it is. And um, I mean, Melbourne's uh, trump card has been their starting pitching. I mean, they've been strong across the board, but their, uh, their starting pitching has been awesome with uh, Jeremy Guthrie in the mix. It looks like he's on his way out now. Yeah, Guthrie's sort of dropped in, thrown a few in for a few games, got his first win on the weekend in the series, on the yep. weekend, and uh, he's gone. Mm hmm. Gave up, uh, well, it was 11 hits we were talking earlier um, before the. For the show, 11 hits in six innings. But of those 11 hits, only one was a double, extra bases. So he's keeping him to singles. Yeah. And um, and a, a lazy 12 ground balls out ground during ball that time. So just changing speeds and getting guys yeah. to roll over on it. Um, yeah, pretty good job to finish off on. So yeah, pretty hard to, to get hurt too much when there's uh, just single, 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 and ground balls in between. Absolutely. Uh, another big story for the weekend for mine is the battle for thirds is heating up. Mm -hmm. You got the Cavs, you got the Bite and the Bandits, and they've all got designs on making the playoffs. Yeah. One of them's going to miss out. So close. The standings are just every every series is, is changing the dynamic of that of the uh, the ladder at the moment. So um, yeah, these last two rounds are just going to be huge. Kind of tried to crunch the numbers as to who was going to make it, but it's just too hard. No. There's too many variables with the the two rounds to go. So many scenarios. The teams playing each other. That uh, yeah. you know, who knows? One sweep can uh, change mm -hmm. things in a hurry. Oh, a sweep would just be. Amazing, that would turn it all on its head. Yeah, the last round is going to be uh, Brisbane versus the Cavs, mm -hmm. and that could uh, be a massive one for who actually ends up getting in the playoffs. Well, exactly right. Like, say Melbourne look like they've got number, the top spot stitched up, but um, yeah, that, that series would be huge. That could be a, series, a battle for second. Absolutely. Pretty big story in the weekend just here behind us that yep. uh, Adelaide, mate, the uh, Adelaide Bite raised an amazing just over 10 grand. Yeah, that's for unreal. Team with their fundraiser. So, Tip of the hat to the guys here. Mm -hmm. I was here on the weekend. The guys are working their butt off, and uh, really great to see the SABL, uh, you know, public rallying behind a cause and putting their money where their mouth is. It is, yeah. Canteen's a very good cause, and um, as soon as you've got the kids involved, everyone's more than happy to open the wallets and uh, contribute. You know, a small sport like baseball, you see, you know, we've got the Team Spencer thing over in Perth, mm -hmm. where yep. guys have raised a lot of money, which is fantastic, and. You know, the, the baseball public has done a really good job and each team's done a great job in raising money for those less fortunate than us. So, tip of the hat to uh, all the teams who you know, go above and beyond and work hard for the charities around the Yeah, exactly right. All right, Clive, let's, uh, we'll come back in just a moment. We'll start talking about series rounds from the last weekend. Let's see what happens. Star mm -hmm. over the weekend. What about the Brisbane Bandits and the Sydney Blue Sox? Well, in a three-game series. Yeah, had one out. Uh, rain out, which is unfortunate on the uh, last game of the series. The heavens opened and uh, yeah, wiped out game four. But uh, Brisbane took the took two of the first three, so they win the series two one. And um, yeah, sort of, they looked like they were going to keep it rolling. Yeah, they really looked like they were in, in line for a 3-1 uh, series win, but uh, no, it didn't quite get there. Would have been pretty stiff, I reckon. Mm. Not too happy about the, having the last one rained out with a bit of momentum going. Yeah, that's right. Um, Sydney's only win was actually a bit of an epic game. 10-9 win for the Blue Sox, mm -hmm. which was quite fantastic to watch, actually. Sort of, um, they busted out early, Brisbane came back, and then Blue Sox came back again and hung on with the 20 Ben Stencil drop of the hammer for strike three in the, the last out, which was... It was a great game to yes. watch. Yeah, and he's been good in the closer role too, so if they can get a get a tight lead, you're pretty happy throwing the ball over to him. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're saying that Brisbane too with their dominant ball pen, we've talked about that at nauseam. But um, yeah, he, he's been great, so very handy. Yeah, he uh, he just comes at you. Just mm -hmm. throw, he lock, here it is, throws a fastball, like gets ahead of the count. And entertaining he's on Twitter as well. Entertaining, great, great, great man, great mm -hmm. baseball man. 
Um, Kramer Champlin bounced back for a really good win for Brisbane after he had a shocker against the bite last series. He did, yeah, but gave him a few innings this, this week. Yeah, come out with the six strikeouts and seven digs, mm -hmm. which was fantastic for Brizzy, and it's going to be important for Brizzy moving forward that their rotation can uh, pick up the slack. Well, that's probably the, the... If you can see one weakness in the team, that's probably it. The, the bullpen would say it's great. They've got some, some big bats there now, especially with Trent Olchin in the lineup. Uh, alongside Lutz and Nielsen and, and everybody else at Whitefield at the top of the line. It's been unbelievable. Really. Yeah. You just keep rattling off name after name after name. But if there is one weakness that you would have to say that they've really got to sharpen up come playoff time, it's the starting rotation. Yeah. So if, if Chandler can keep doing that. I think so. Pitching's been a little bit off. I mean, obviously Ryan mm -hmm. Searle, the back's been awesome. Yep. Uh, Matty Timms has been up and down all, mm -hmm. all over the place. And he was one of the sort of mainstays of their bullpen last year. Yeah, he was. Recent year. So they've got some good guys in there. But certainly with that lineup, I mean, if they can get the pitching right, they're going to yeah. be, uh, you know, you wouldn't mind a couple of pesos on them to uh, maybe cause an upset at yeah, the business end of the season. Along the same lines as Canberra, aren't they? They're, you know they're going to score runs. But more Absolutely. often than not, they will score runs. They've just got to hold teams to, to less. That's how you win games, apparently. Yeah. yeah. And add those, like you say, those guys like Alton and, mm. and, you know, Lutzi to the lineup. It's a pretty daunting one to be throwing at. Oh, geez. I wouldn't want to be in them. No. no. Okay. Uh, Adelaide v Perth, so that was right behind us. Uh, Adelaide yep. Bike got the 3 1 series chocolates over Perth. They did, yep. Perth Heat in a pretty good series. Um, both teams really having a crack. It was pretty close games, but uh, Adelaide would have been very happy to get the three wins. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and a big part of that too was uh, the young fella, Jordan McArdle. Yeah, another young fella mm. like this. League's been full of good young fellas this year, Jordan McCall. Young, young local lad, yep. Adelaide born and bred. And um, yeah, well he's, uh, all the numbers for the series were 7 for 12, I think he was. Yeah, 7 uh, for 12. Punching out extra base hits. Banging in a few couple of doubles. Yeah. yeah. And he's a kid that's been around for a little while, mm -hmm. sort of like absorbed. Like he's, he's even spoken about absorbing what he's got on the bench. Yeah. So he's obviously a uh, bit of a student of the game, doesn't just sit there and, you know. Yeah, he spent time as a bullpen catcher for them and sitting on the bench a lot uh, last year, I believe. He spent, he spent a lot of time with the, with the team. So that, that all helps with um, feeling a lot more comfortable when you do get your, your time. And, Geez, have a look at him now, he's, he's looking comfortable. He got hitters like, uh, obviously, Denning and Steph mm -hmm. Welch just sort of picked the brains off. Obviously, has helped him. Oh, it'd be crazy not to win those guys. Done a good job. Yeah. Um, and the big thing for the bite on the weekend with their series win was their... Because their pitching has been a bit of an Achilles mm -hmm. heel, the starters. Yep. Uh, McNabb's been good. Yep. But Steve Chambers has had a bit of a nightmare this year, and, and he was much better on the weekend. Oh, that's it. Last year he was huge, wasn't he? He was, uh, I think yeah, he was still under, he was undefeated this time of the year, I think, last year. Yep. And really has had a bit of a rocky road so far. But... Um, no, I had, a, had a, a great outing this week. It was at six Ks in four and a bit innings or something yeah. like that. So that's that's a that's a good quality start in the in, in terms of I mean not quality start, he's not throwing six, seven innings, but in terms of his season, yeah. that's a great way to get back on, on track. Absolutely. It's sort of there, a little Adelaide a bit the same. The back of their bullpen's been good, Van Mill's been really good mm. of course. Yep. Matty Rims has been used as a go-to guy all over the shop. Yep. Um, has struggled a bit in the weekend in one of his outings, but he's been real good. But uh, yeah, if they can get the starting pitching right once again, mm. you know they need to do that to challenge. And Zach Cooper was a guy who was yeah. been out of the bullpen until last weekend. Yep. He's now put uh, he's had two starts only and had uh, two really good outings. On the, and that's on it. I mean, that's what Steve needs to be looking for: getting some some good innings in from his starters, which is what Cooper's done, giving him a, giving them a platform to then hand it over to the bullpen and see how we go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, the last series, uh, Melbourne Aces. They just keep rolling with a three-one victory over Canberra. How'd you see that one? Yeah, well, Melbourne, they just keep rolling, don't they? They, they, they? they might have a game where the bats are a little bit quiet and the pitching just shuts them down, which, I mean, look at Hamburger. For, the for Hamburger? He just, he's unhittable. Yeah, really interesting on the weekend, the Hamburger was through eight innings, had 115 pitches up. Mm -hmm. Through eight innings, they were leading by, I think, nine. I think it was 10-1. Mm -hmm. So what do you normally do in that situation? Maybe just chuck the pill to someone else to roll them over? Yeah, get a but CG, that's what you do. Um, Hamburger straight back out of there. Another yeah. 10 pitches, yep. up to 125 and uh, rolls through the complete game. He wants one with a lot, that's what he wants. He wants one with a lot, mate, there's mm. no doubt about it. So, uh, it's just a horse he's been. He's been throwing high pitch Phenomenal. counts, getting out there and just doing it. A lot of innings, a lot of strikeouts, just, just showing why why he's a bloke that pitching the bigs. Hasn't had a bad mm. one. No, that's Has it. Has not had a bad one. And when you've got one guy that can rely on to give you pretty much almost a guaranteed win yeah. every series, you play yeah. with house money for the rest of the season. Exactly right, and I mean, obviously they still had Guthrie this weekend too, and uh, and the Honda man hanging around. So um, things will change a little bit now if Guthrie's not around the place. They're going to have to they'll throw someone else back into that starting role for yeah, that other game. It's going to be interesting to see what happens there actually, mm -hmm. because they've had a couple of guys now. Honda's, uh, you know, he's he's gone, so he's been pitching. They've got you've got Hamburger up there. Yep. Kennedy's still in the mix. Yep. But uh, you know, who knows? Are they going to like bring someone else in just to? Uh, Bring another major league win. Who won the World Series? Who was World Series Game Seven pitcher last? Uh, 
Not last year. Not last year. Not in the mix, but so. <laughs> but I'm thinking, yeah, who else might be in the mix? But yeah, Melbourne keep rolling. Canberra mm -hmm. weren't uh, disgraced. They were in most games. Yep. Um, apart from that one blowout with the hamburger pitching, they were pretty good. Uh, Sean Guinard actually yes. had a really interesting outing. That was the only win for Canberra, but uh, he's had his fourth win for the season, yep. so he's hanging in there uh, to get a result. It was. And he's yeah, he's been uh, was it called it effectively wild. Seven walks yet six Ks, yes. and uh, still hung in there for the win. Like they only gave up one run, but like yeah, yeah. must have put three guys on, struck the next two out every time. Whatever works. But, uh, whatever works. Whatever for works. You, so get some working. So Canberra's certainly not done. Um, oh no, and like we say with, the, with those bats, and, and the bats are still swinging, they're still scoring a lot of runs. I mean, you look at the league leaders with the hitting, I think three of the top four or three of the top five are the Canberra guys, and, yeah. um, and those names are rotating through. I, mean, I think Scott Kelly's leading the, the batting at the, at the moment, and I don't think we've well, mentioned him all year. Yeah, you're so exactly right. It's, um, it's crazy, they've got so many options to score runs, it's just a matter of, like we say, if the pitching can keep them in the game, they'll, they'll be right up there with Melbourne at the end, I think. Absolutely. All right, close that. It's about wraps up the mm -hmm. round, and we'll be back shortly with some tweets of the week. Of the week. No, I like them off my face. I've only had a few champagnes. I'll be alright. There's only one cop in town. I'll just take the back streets. I need the car in the morning. from the Adelaide Bite and you're watching ABL Hot Corn. Welcome back. Okay, Clothes, our tweets of the week tweets this week. Of tweets of the, the week. week. Get on Twitter, don't forget. Get on there. ABL Hot Corner, send us your tweets. Mm -hmm. If they're good enough, we'll put them on. They better right. be good though. They better be good. Okay. So Clothes, kicking off, I'll start. Um, Paul Morgan, who is a announcer for the Perth Heat. Mm -hmm. Him and Dan Vaughan are over here sitting right there on the weekend, a couple of fantastic blokes who would do a really great job for the heat. Um, now Paul's just quoted, good time in Adelaide, would have liked a couple more wins, but uh, hats off to the Adelaide bike for a great work all the staff do, outstanding. And that's uh, echoed by everyone that was here, the, uh, the bike staff, just amazing the work they do. Had, had their work cut out early with the amount of rain we had. Yeah, I can tell you they were here on the Thursday night when it did uh, pour down with rain and they were working their butts off to get the game in. Yep. Um, unfortunately, couldn't get it in, but uh, had, a, had a fair crack But still managed to get the four games in for the weekend. And just on top of that, Matty Williams, who obviously is one of the great players for the Adelaide Bible, was out there with a shovel doing work himself, so uh, hats off to Matty Williams as well. Well done, Matty. <laughs> What about next one, mate? Well, the Adelaide Bite themselves, uh, we referred earlier to the um, the fundraising for Canteen, the Adelaide Bite Tweet. Meanwhile, our Canteen Australia pledge tally needs $6,000, and thanks to all your donations and jersey bids, we will easily crack 10 grand. Which they've now done, so uh, like I said, massive hats off to those yeah. guys. No, and to the public who uh, put their money in. It is a huge effort. I mean, 10 grand is nothing to sneeze at at all. It was pretty good they had a... Uh, had a bit of a fundraiser where you put a dollar in for every strikeout, and mm -hmm. Perth uh, raised the ante by striking out quite a bit in the weekend. Uh, very Got charitable. Money, very charitable. Very charitable. Good on your boys. Especially uh, Husey ramped it up a little bit. And much, cheap beers. Much to the uh, excitement of the crowd and the shark tank, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, next one was uh, Cricket K, who actually runs the ABL Fantasy for the mm -hmm. league, and she's piped in with Trent Olgen in a bandits uniform. It just looks wrong to me. Well, it's different, certainly different from what we've seen over the years. And then the direct reply from the Brisbane Fandits account mm -hmm. was, to my eyes, it looks so right. 
I think it's safe to say that it's never even never, never ever looked better. I think any team here in Australia in the ABL that has Trent Alton wearing the uniform would be pretty happy with it. You're going to be pretty happy with a header of his calibre, aren't you, in the yeah. team, that's for sure. I'll let that's you do it. the next one, mate, it's a winner. From ABL Commons. Melbourne Aces invent a brand new mid-inning entertainment game. Kids invited onto the field to play Murder in the Dark. Now that's got something to do. Bit of a dig at the old yes. power going out at, uh, mm -hmm. at Melbourne. Pretty much every round. Yeah. And uh, so ABL Commons, Commons thinks that the kids can get out there in the dark and play Murder in the Dark. Well, the light tower's going on strike. What yeah. else are you going to do? So if you're old enough to remember how to play that game, which uh, I am, but we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> okay, and finally, yeah, on a much more serious note, yes. um, Perth Heat with the uh, Heat win. This is for you, 44. This one's for you. We'll forever miss you, Craig Jelks. Obviously, a uh, mm -hmm. massive, massive blow to the baseball community with uh, Jelksy oh, did unfortunately the, passing away. Yeah, the news rocked the baseball world in, in Australia. Absolutely did. And, uh, well, and, and he had so many connections in America too, for that matter, having played in the majors and coached a lot over there. So it was really terrible news that um, shook everyone a little bit. And, Certainly did. Um, not, just, not just a great player and coach over the years, but it's just such a good bloke. You hear so many stories around the place of. Um, of how he helped help with juniors and helped with so, so much of the coaching, just giving back to the game. And um, and I mean, as a I, I never had the opportunity to play with or against him, but as a fan going out to the uh, old days at Nord Oval with the Adelaide Giants, um, he'd be the one guy for the Perth Heat you'd, you'd recognise instantly. Just he had that charisma, didn't he? The big number 44 big, with big the, the buttons done down down to here. He's just had that swagger, but. It's just, just awesome to watch, so really yeah. is uh, yeah, sad, sad news. I had a, uh, I had quite a few non-baseball people mm -hmm. ask me about him because he'd appeared so often in a lot of Twitter feeds and mm -hmm. the like of like friends of mine, and uh, it was kind of hard for me to explain what he was like, but I, I, my best analogy was what Phil Richards was to cricket, yeah. Greg Jelks kind of was to, yeah, to the ABL as like. that guy with the swagger and mm -hmm. just had respect of the whole league and he had a presence about him, didn't he? Yeah, and you see, like you say, a lot of, lot of news on Twitter from uh, opposing players. Like I saw one tweet, I, I wish I, I brought it with me tonight, from Craig Watts, um, who played a lot of baseball against the Washington Adelaide yeah. Giants. Yep. And he commented on that swagger and just said what a, what a gentleman he was, what a great bloke, what a great player, and that's that something much in a nutshell. Yeah, so a great loss to baseball and he'll be remembered fondly by all the ever saw him. So, Very much so. condolences to his family. Mm -hmm. In clothes, we'll be back in one moment and we're going to do our predictions for the next round. Finish off. Okay, Jankstar. Our predictions for this week. Let's face it, mate. Our predictions so far probably would have left us about sixteen hundred bucks in the Hollywood sports bet if we'd had a crack. We're bad. We are not good we are tipperers. Real bad. Do not copy us. We've been bad tipperers, which probably means yeah. this year that it's uh, really good for the competition that you don't know who's going to win mm. each round, unless it's Melbourne. Exactly right. But um, it's. Oh Jesus! If you have a tipping competition, it's good luck to you if you're winning it. It's, it has been unbelievable. Yeah. Somewhat of a struggle. Oh, and um, I'm looking here now. First, Adelaide bite at Melbourne Aces. Kick it off week. with Adelaide bite at the Melbourne Aces. I'm like, still, how, do you, how do you pick that one? I mean, obviously, straight away you want to look at it and go, Melbourne 3 1, Melbourne sweet. Adelaide played some good ball here on the weekend, so. Tick off. I mean, you got hamburgers, yeah. so there's one for Melbourne. Mm -hmm. right and, and the Honda Man. Honda Man's not there, he's gone. Oh, he's gone. Honda Man's gone. Yeah. You didn't tell me that. Yeah, no, I did actually mention it before the show, so you haven't, haven't been paying attention, but that's okay. Fine then, Adelaide 3 1. <laughs> <laughs> Adelaide 3-1. Well, that's probably close to, yeah. Why not? Because like, yeah, you know, can't be the hamburger. To win. I'm going to go for uh, Melbourne Aces 3-1 win over the bye. I just mm -hmm. think they are just playing too well at home, uh, and they're rolling. Yeah. But you know, who knows? All right, Perth Heat at the Brisbane Bandits. Uh, big chance the Bandits to make some hay while the sun shines. Well, that's it. I mean, Perth. I mean, they're sitting bottom there. By all means, not an easy beat, but they are sitting bottom of the bottom of the standings. So um, if Brisbane are going to have that crack at a 3-1 or even sweet. This might be it. So um, at home, I'll take Brizzy three one. Three one. Just to mix it up a bit, I'll go the. I'm going to go the sweep. I'm going to say Brisbane really turn it on. Nice. And come rolling in the playoff contention with mm -hmm. a sweep of Perth Heat. With uh, intentions of going back to back. Absolutely. Why not? And lastly, the Canberra Cavalry. Big series for them. Yeah. And last chance hotel for the Blue Sox. Really, they've got to really make hay on this one and probably get a sweep. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking of split. Oh, I'm 2 -2 I like here. Yeah. 
find the way you think. It's, I just, I, as much as I think Canberra are the better team, um, I think they're that much better than they're not going to let Sydney get away with a win or two. Sydney are a pretty good team and they've, they've played some pretty good ball, but they've uh, struggled to put the W's on the ball. Yeah. So, so you're going to split? I'll go to split. No, I'd mix it up. I'll say Canberra 3 1, just to put them in massive contention for the players as well. And then we'll have a look next week and just see how wrong we were again. We'll see how wrong we were again. We'll probably we'll be like, not even close. Fair chance. <laughs> we'll play close. <laughs> that just about wraps it up for this week's ABO Hot Corner. But don't forget, get on Twitter, get on our Facebook page, communicate with us, let us know what you think, and stick around this week. Make sure you get to the ballpark because there's going to be some yeah. cracking games. Oh, huge. With just two rounds to go, support your team <laughs> and uh, enjoy yourself. Until next time, Clothes. I'm Jamie Janger Clayton. And, and I'm Brooke Boris Kilpatrick for Viva, and we are out.